Hey everyone, uh, I'm Jesse Squires. Uh, you may know me from uh, JSQ Messages, open source I iOS library, uh, or the Swift weekly brief uh, newsletter about swift.org. Uh, so today we're going to talk about um, contributing to open source Swift. So we're going to go over uh, quite a few different things. We're going to talk about the uh, the different parts of Swift and the different projects, um, a little bit about LLVM, uh, the skills that you need, um, and how and why uh, you should contribute. Uh, hopefully, Swift will feel um, more approachable uh, after this talk. So there are lots of different projects. I think Apple surprised us uh, when they announced uh, Swift was uh, being open sourced. Uh, it wasn't just the compiler. It was also the core libraries and the standard library, the formal uh, Swift evolution process. Um, the great thing about this is that I think there's something here uh, for everyone. So you don't have to be a compiler expert uh, to contribute. But it is overwhelming, uh, and it's hard to know where to start. And so we're going to look at how all of these different pieces fit together and how they're related. And I think that uh, having this kind of high-level overview um, of how the compiler works and how the pieces fit together can help situate you with, within the project and within the area that you want to contribute to. So in order to answer this question, we are going to ask another question first, which is what actually happens when you compile your code? This is a more fundamental question. As you know, Swift is built on top of LLVM. Uh, LLVM was created by this guy named Chris Latner. I'm not sure who that is, but I heard he knows a lot about compilers. So how do we get from writing code to a native executable binary? We begin with a front end for a specific language. That front end is, respons is responsible for parsing that source code and producing LLVM IR. And IR stands for Intermediate Representation. And this is how uh, LLVM represents uh, your code in the compiler. Uh, IR is like a high-level assembly language uh, that is independent of architecture. And it's important to note that it's uh, a first-class language with well-defined semantics. From there, uh, LLVM IR is handed off to an optimizer, which performs various analysis and optimization passes on your code uh, to improve the code. That optimized IR is then sent to a backend, which is responsible for uh, producing um, native machine code based on the architecture or instruction set specified by the backend. LLVM is very modular. Um, it's been a very successful uh, project for this reason uh, because it has decoupled uh, basically the language and parsing um, uh, from the uh, from actually producing uh, your binary with this the LLVMIR layer in the middle. And so before Swift, there was Clang. Clang is a C, C++, and Objective-C front end to LLVM. <laughs> its pipeline begins with your C or Objective-C source code. We take that source code, we parse that source code into the, an AST, an abstract syntax tree. 
And this is a tree representation of your code. The AST then goes through semantic analysis, where different transformations uh, are performed, uh, different optimizations. This modified AST is then handed to a code generation phase, which produces IR, which is then handed off to LLVM and the pipeline that we just looked at in the previous slide, uh, which then produces our, our binary. Um, there's also this other kind of awkward branch to Clang uh, where we can do further analysis. And this is where things like the static analyzer functionality comes from. Uh, we won't talk much about this, but um, the, the, the Clang architecture, there, there are some legacy issues. It's not as clean as this diagram kind of portrays it. Um, the parsing and semantic analysis are a bit intertwined. There's some code duplication. Um, it's a great tool, but it's not quite the cleanest. And this has informed the Swift compiler in a lot of ways. And so the Swift pipeline has incorporated a lot of lessons learned from Clang and has tried to avoid uh, some of the mistakes or maybe not so good decisions. So we begin with our Swift code. That code is parsed into an AST. This is very similar to what we just looked at. The SD also goes through semantic analysis. And this phase is responsible for taking the parsed AST and transforming it into a well-formed and fully type-checked form of the AST. At this stage, uh, we can also emit warnings and errors uh, for semantic problems in the source code. And then this is handed off to the SIL generation phase. SIL stands for Swift Intermediate Language. This is similar to LLVM IR. Uh, SIL is basically a Swifty wrapper around IR. And so SIL gen produces raw SIL. That raw SIL then goes through analysis and optimization. This is where most of Swift's swiftiness comes from because we have this, uh, this intermediate layer here. Um, we can uh, do lots of optimizations in this phase. Uh, there's Swift specific optimizations, arc optimizations, devirtualization, and other things that uh, can happen here. And this produces what we call canonical SIL. Canonical SIL is then passed off to the IR generation phase and produces LLVM IR. We then hand it off to LLVM to complete the process like before. And then there's one other piece to this. And it has to do with how we interoperate with C and Objective-C. And that's through module maps, which you've probably seen or at least heard of. The, uh, we can take these Clang modules. Um, they pass through the Clang importer. And uh, their resulting ASTs can be referred to through semantic analysis. And again, this is what makes interop possible. So that's kind of a lot of stuff. Uh, compilers are a more challenging area of computer science. Um, I am not an expert, but 
don't worry, no one is really an expert in each of these phases. Even the people on the core team uh, have specialized areas throughout this pipeline. Uh, but to kind of ground this, um, these abstract ideas, we're going to look at a small example um, and try to ground this in something more concrete. So we have our basic Hello World program. We can compile and run this, as you would expect from the command line. And we can actually uh, produce and examine the AST. And it looks like this. And we're not going to go through this. This is, there's a lot happening here. Uh, it's kind of crazy. This is mostly just to show you, like, this is what this looks like. Um, and you can do this with your own code. We can also emit SIL. In this command, we're actually going to demangle the symbol names. Uh, if you're not familiar, Swift uses name mangling. We don't have much time to talk about that, but that's uh, just a brief explanation of what's happening here. And SIL looks like this. Again, we're not going to go into this in depth, but uh, you can do this on your own. It's, uh, again, kind of like reading assembly language. Um, it's very verbose, but it's not too hard to follow. We can then also emit LLVMIR. We're not going to look at this uh, on the slides. It's a little too large. And we can actually emit assembly as well. Uh, and again, we're not going to look at this. Uh, so again, it's kind of a lot, but don't be overwhelmed. Um, again, you don't have to have expert knowledge in all of these areas to contribute. Uh, but I do think it helps to uh, see this at a high level and kind of understand the whole pipeline. Um, and this is kind of what we're going to dive into next with all of the different projects and repositories. And we're going to see how they fit in the pipeline. We're going to talk about the coding skills that you need and um, kind of the difficulty and like barrier to entry for each of these uh, projects and areas. So back to our pipeline that we examined before. Here's how that breaks down into the projects, basically. So within the main Swift repo, we have uh, subdirectories for basically each phase of the pipeline. So if there's a specific area that you're, you're trying to work in or contribute to or file a bug report for, um, this is a kind of a map of where to look. Off in the corner here, we have LLVM, Clang, and LLDB. They're kind of their own thing that we'll talk about more in a minute. And at the beginning of the pipeline, we have the standard library, the core libraries, uh, and the Swift package manager. And this should make sense. These are Swift and C libraries that are fed through the pipeline, either parsed through Swift or through the Clang importer, um, just like you would write your own code and compile it. So that should be pretty intuitive there. So we'll start with what I think of as Swift core. And to kind of explain this here, this uh, for the compiler here, this is uh, hard level of difficulty. C++, uh, it's the compiler is written in C++, and there's very high activity on GitHub on this project. So that's kind of how to read these slides here. The um, difficulty ratings that I've given here are maybe slightly subjective, but also kind of relative to all the projects um, I think C++ experience is not that common, and uh, 
if you've never written or used C++ a lot, um, it can be challenging. It's much more nuanced uh, than Swift and um, actually has a lot of the issues that Swift tries to address, like undefined behavior. Um, standard library, this is what we all use. Um, this is a, a medium difficulty. And I have this asterisk next to Swift because it's slightly different than normal Swift. In the standard library, you have access to LLVM built-ins. And these are the, the primitive types in LLVM IR. And so you have direct access to those in the standard library. Uh, and finally, we have SourceKit, which is what powers Xcode syntax highlighting and never crashes. <laughs> this is in C++, so it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, so next we have uh, what I consider the Swift like infrastructure, and these three projects are actually part of the LLVM umbrella project, but they are Swift specific clones of these projects with some small Swift specific changes. These uh, are very hard to contribute to. These require the deepest compiler and Clang and LLVM knowledge. There's not a lot of activity here on GitHub. Um, I think these are mostly um, settled, uh, maybe until uh, Swift 3. Um, and another important note here is that all of these projects are governed by the LLVM developer policies and coding standards and licensing. They're not really part of the Swift uh, brand of projects. And in many cases, if you're contributing, if uh, your, your change may not be specific to Swift, and if that's the case, you actually need to contribute those changes upstream to the parent projects. And these are synced regularly with LLVM. Next, we have the package manager. Uh, medium difficulty here. It is all in Swift, which is really nice. Um, so the barrier is low in, in that respect, but it does wrap a lot of C libraries. Um, so there's a lot of interop with C. Um, that may not be familiar to everyone. And then we have LL build, which is a low level build system. Uh, it's a set of libraries for building build systems. It's kind of meta. Uh, and this is just kind of a generally more challenging kind of project. Then we have uh, the core libraries. And I think these are probably the easiest to get started with. Uh, we're familiar with these. We've used these from Objective-C. Uh, they're mostly in Swift, but with some C and C interop. Uh, so just like Objective-C foundation wraps the C-level core foundation, uh, Swift does the same. And finally, we have uh, Swift Evolution. So this contains the uh, formal process for fundamental changes to Swift. So anyone from the community can write a proposal. This, re uh, this uh, repository also contains the development and release schedules. This is a good place to stay updated on uh, what's coming up in each release, what's planned, um, what is intentionally not planned, etc. If you are submitting proposals, um, they should really um, they should really provide tangible benefits to the community. And you really need to be thoughtful with these propo these proposals and vet them on the mailing lists first. Um, 
there, there have been a few cases where um, someone says, you know, I want this feature, uh, but they don't really give a good reason why. Uh, so if you really want to push for a change in Swift, uh, you really need to have a good argument for that and try to build support uh, from the community. And so, now we're going to talk about uh, actually contributing. A couple important things to note uh, is that discussion needs to happen on the mailing lists, not on GitHub. And issues are on the JIRA bug tracker, also not on GitHub. Um, this is important for different documentation reasons. Um, it's easy to start discussing things on a pull request sometimes, but um, the, the core team really asks that most discussion is kept, kept uh, in JIRA and the mailing lists. Um, so one important thing to note here is you really should read the contributing guidelines and really try to do this right. Uh, the best way to get your changes accepted are to follow these guidelines. We won't go through uh, all of them, but you can find them online. And so just like there are many parts to Swift and all the different projects, there are tons of ways that you can contribute, and it doesn't just have to be code. So aside from new features and bug fixes, there are many other things you can do, like documentation, translations of documentation. All of these things massively help the community. Another thing I think is really important is being present on the mailing lists. I think opinions matter from every level. It doesn't matter whether you've been programming for 20 years or 20 days. Your perspective matters. And on a number of occasions, Chris Latner has made this very clear, uh, Swift is really intended to be um, not just a great language for us to kind of replace Objective-C, but a great language for uh, beginners as well. Uh, one last thing, uh, we often like to uh, joke about all the typo fixes, but uh, I do think they're important, um, uh, especially for non-native English speakers who are trying to understand. If there are typos there, it's going to make it even harder to understand, uh, harder to possibly translate. Um, so anytime you see a typo, submit a quick pull request, and it's, it's going to be a huge help. You, you don't just have to be contributing new features. Uh, so a couple pro tips. Most of our interaction with the core team is on Twitter or GitHub or the mailing lists. It's important to be kind. People will disagree on the mailing lists. Use emoji. Don't be mean and respect other people's opinions. It's, it's easy to misread text. I think really important to, to keep this in mind. Ask for help if you need it. There are tons of places to do this. You can ask for help on Twitter. All of us are there to help. The mailing lists are also there as a really great resource. When submitting a PR, it's good to um, follow best practices, include tests, make sure your code, code is clean, all the things that we know how to do. Um, it's going to be way easier for the person who has to review your code um, uh, to do that uh, if you follow best practices and follow the guidelines. And even more importantly, if something gets rejected, don't get discouraged. Um, it may not be the right time for this feature. Um, it may not be the right direction for Swift. It may just not be the right time. Whether a proposal is rejected or a pull request is rejected, it doesn't mean you're a terrible person. 
It just means that's not right um, for Swift either right now or maybe at all. And I think it's important to know that, or to keep in mind that the core team really knows the big picture. They're guiding these projects. Um, and sometimes they may know things that we don't. And so a rejected proposal or pull request is not the end of the world. In fact, some of the uh, top contributors from the community have had uh, pull requests rejected. Uh, another helpful thing, each uh, project has a code owner's file. This will tell you uh, which core team member uh, kind of owns which part of the code base. If you tag them on your pull request, it's going to make everyone's uh, life much easier. And you can say, you know, this person should review this pull request. Uh, that'll save everyone a lot of time. Um, and it'll, it'll, uh, uh, your, your changes can get reviewed and hopefully accepted uh, much faster. Uh, and again, remember, no one's an expert in every single aspect of this. And so it's okay to ask questions. It's okay um, to, to not be perfect and everything. Um, the core contributors or the, the core team, they want to accept your changes. Uh, and I can't stress that enough. They, they want everyone to participate and they will work with you on a pull request to try to get that accepted in any way that, that they can. As long as you work with them and receive their feedback well and make the changes they ask. Um, if it's right for Swift, they, they really want to merge your changes. Um, and a good way to start is to follow examples. These are some really great people in the community that don't work at Apple that have been doing really great work. They have found their uh, sort of area of expertise. So I encourage you to find part of Swift or the other projects that you're passionate about and focus on that and pursue that aspect. Um, this will make you most successful, I think, as an individual contributor. Um, and I think this will um, uh, really help with the success of Swift as a whole. But these people, um, these contributors here, did not just instantly uh, become these awesome contributors on day one, right? Everything. Um, starts with a small change. And making small improvements is the way that everyone gets involved. Uh, and again, th th this is uh, a huge deal for the core team. They want the community to participate. And Swift's success really depends on community participation. And so why should we contribute? I think uh, it's pretty clear that Apple is hugely invested in Swift and it's not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. This is really going to be the next generation of uh, iOS and macOS development and maybe more, maybe server side and Linux development. And Swift can and will be whatever we want it to be as a community. The entire process is completely open and the team, the core team, is so receptive to all of our feedback uh, that we really have a chance here to uh, make Swift uh, the language that we want. And not, again, not just by code contributions, but by discussing ideas on the mailing list. And so Swift's success is our success as individual developers, Swift's portability is our portability. The more platforms that, that Swift is available on, the, the more places we can use our skills in Swift uh, to, to build all kinds of apps. 
Um, and so, on, on a final note here, uh, yesterday Daniel was talking about core data being over a decade old and how it's a rock solid and reliable framework now after a decade of refinements and bug fixes. And we're still in the very early days of Swift. Um, and so we can ask ourselves, what do we want Swift to be like in 10 years? Uh, these first few years are definitely the defining moments of Swift. And we, uh, we have the, the power to decide where the language goes. Um, and it's, again, more than just the compiler and the code and the libraries, but also how we write Swift, like what the Swift best practices are. That's also implicit in all of these contributions. Uh, what's the best way to write good Swift? And so really, Swift is much more than just a programming language, as we can see from this conference. Uh, Swift is a community full of awesome people that want to build awesome things. And so don't be afraid to contribute or ask for help. Uh, the best thing you can do is try. And that's all I've got.